Hey guys, so today we're going to be importing some art assets like for the grass and buildings and we're going to be playing around with tiles. So we're going to import our tile sprites. So we're going to create two new sprites. I'm going to hit import. This is where mine are saved. So we're going to import this sprite right here. I'm going to call it SPR tile terrain. So this is the sprite for the tile set that we're going to create here. All right, and let's create the second one. So SPR tile cottage. Okay, and we'll import that one too. And then we're going to create the corresponding tile sets. And I'm going to call this tile terrain. And we select our terrain sprite. And same for this one. Cottage. And select that one. So we're going to just change one thing here. And then I just want to show you how tiles work. We'll explore all these a bit more in a second, but we just have to change the width and height of the tiles. So it'll default to 16, but our ones are 32 by 32. There we go. And you can see at the top left hand corner, the very first tile, it's kind of, it's not counted. We can't use it. So just keep that in mind. Don't put anything that you need there. And we'll do the same for the terrain. So change that to 32 by 32. Cool, and we'll come into the room. We can get rid of actually this hideous thing now because we're not going to need it for the player anymore and we don't need a background. So we'll delete it. We actually don't need this background layer either. And we're going to create a new tile layer. And let's assign this to the terrain. So now we come over here we can use a tile to kind of paint onto our game world. And this is cool because we can have as many different squares that look exactly the same, but they're all using just this same sprite here. And up here, we can change the brush size. Let's just fill in the whole room. And you can see our players have disappeared and our NPCs have disappeared. And that's because the tile layer right now is above our instances layer. So if you check its depth, it has a depth of zero, whereas our instances, they have a depth of 100. So stuff with a lower depth actually appears closer to the screen. So if we drag this above it, it's going to change its depth to be zero and this to be 100. And they're going to be closer to the screen. So if this doesn't quite make sense to you, just picture yourself, let's say in a field. And if you look off into the distance, maybe about 10 meters away, let's say that you can see a couple trees. And then much, much further than that, on the horizon, you can see a mountain line. So those mountains are far deeper in your view. They have a depth that is very high. And the trees, their depth is much lower. So exactly the same, the lower your depth, the closer you will be. And the higher your depth, the further back you're going to be in the game world. All right, so let's create another tile layer. And I'm also going to assign this to the terrain. And let's draw a little path. So if you click and then drag, you can select multiple sprites and then you can paint on like that. So this isn't a great looking path, right? There are these holes in between them. And wouldn't it be really nice if we could get it so that we can just kind of draw a perfect path. And we can actually do this using something in the tile set called auto tiling. So let's quit this and let's come to the terrain sprite. And so over here, there's a couple of things we can do. So the brush builder, it's kind of like before when we were dragging over multiple sprites. So if I maybe select all of these sprites and then click onto it here, this is going to treat this tree as a brush so that if we come back into the room and come into brushes right here, if we click this, we can place whole trees. And you can just, you know, do that yourself by doing this. But, you know, that tool's there if you want it. I'm just going to delete this. So I'm going to erase it. I'm going to hit E and erase. And I'll just close out of this. Okay, so that's the brush builder. Now, another thing that we can do is make tile animations. So if we click that, and let's add an animation. So we'll just make it four for now. Let me just come down maybe to this water. So let's click here for the first frame. For the second frame, let's make it this one. 
for the third frame, we'll make it that one, and we'll go back to the water. And let's preview this. So we've got some bubbling water or something. So if I come back to the room again, and here, and I come into libraries, the animations library, and I click this, if I run the game, or actually, we can actually just preview the game world here, be it play, we can see a little animation. So you can have animated tiles like this. But I'm just going to delete all those because they look a bit odd. Get rid of this. But if you want, you can have a look around or you can import other assets and build animated tiles in this way. But the one I'm most interested in doing is the auto tiles. Okay. So again, let's add a new one. And I'm going to make two. So I'm going to make a grass one and a dirt one. So the way that we do this is you have to match the template to the corresponding tile that you want here. So this completely white one is going to be the tile that's completely filled in. So for us, for the grass, that's going to be this one. And then here, it's going to be all of it's filled in except for the top left corner. So here, that's going to be this one. And then the same for that, that's going to be this one, that one, and we just keep filling it in like this. So we don't really have one that's exactly like this, so I'm just going to make that one. Okay, and this one. That one. There we go. And we're just going to need a blank. I'm going to pick that one, because it's entirely blank. Okay. And let's call this auto tile grass. Actually, let's just call it AT grass. All right, and let's make another one. So AT dirt. And again, so the one that's completely filled in, that's this one. That one is going to be there. And we fill it in exactly the same. All right, so the sun will come back to the room. And now, if we come to libraries, here are our auto tiles. So if we click the dirt one and we start to paint, you can see that we can start making a perfect path. Now, this isn't working perfectly because we're missing a couple of the sprites. So you can see here when we have a sort of junction, it's just using that placeholder one I kind of put in. So if that happens, you might just have to go and fix it up yourself. And just as a note, I think for making a path, it looks better when the dirt is beneath the grass. So if we just drag this one over there and then we'll erase where the path was. So hit E and I'm going to increase this to three. If we just get rid of some of this grass like that and I'll fill it in here. Like that. You can see it looks bit better. Like that. So I'm going to have, I'm going to try and keep a lot of my tile layers separate. So I'm going to have specific layers for the grass and then anything beneath the grass. And I'm going to have ones for like buildings and stuff like that. And I'm going to organize them in a really specific way. So I'm going to set up some folders and some tiles. And I want to show you why it's important to do this because you're Project can quickly become cluttered if you don't do something like this. So we're going to go the four folders that I'm going to have. So we're going to have one called terrain. And this is where all our grass and our paths are going to be. And then I'm going to have level one. And this is going to be everything on top of the terrain. So all of the objects, if we have barrels or chests or anything, the first level of any building, it's going to be in this. All right, and now for another one, because I'm going to have two story house, so I'm going to have level two. And I'm also going to have a level three, but this is just going to have the roof. All right, so we can drag these two into the terrain and this one into here. And I'm going to call this one T for terrain underground one and T 
background one. So for here, I'm going to have, this is going to be the building. So this is going to be L1 building. I'm going to create another one and this is going to be L1 decoration. So So these decorations are kind of going to be anything that will be on top of the building, but still part of the building. So something like a window. So it'll look something like this. And finally, we're going to have on level one, we're going to have objects. So these won't be part of buildings. These are just going to be like, whoops, any chests or barrels or any of these kinds of things that we're going to place. So for example, if we just put this here, so this is just to show you how things are going to be layered. So you can see these barrels, they appear in front of the house. All right. So moving on in level two, we're going to have L2 building again. So cottage, we're going to have L2 decorations. So again, for windows. So let's just put a window and I'll put a little building. And finally, L2 roof. And this is kind of the roof that will be here. And then we'll have another roof up the top. So I'm going to put this on the bottom, assign this to the cottage. And I'll just put one to show you something like this. All right. And finally in level three, we'll just have the very top roof. Like that. Okay. So one last thing, you probably noticed our players and everything have disappeared. I want the players to always be in front of all the buildings so that when we walk up to them, we appear in front. So we're going to put them in front of the terrain and also in front of the buildings. But because people are quite short, they're going to be under anything on level two. So if you're walking behind this here, you can see that we'll be behind anything on level two, but we'll come in front of everything on level one. So this kind of gives us an illusion of depth. So if we're ever passing under a roof or anything, it's going to make them appear beneath it. And we can do a similar thing with treetops. So we'll have the trunks that the players can walk behind or in front of, but they'll always be beneath the treetops. But we'll probably do things like trees and things a bit later. All right, so that's all we need to do to start drawing. So you can start building up your farm. This is your chance to get creative. You can increase the room size. I'm just gonna keep mine as it is. We can also just change it later. So take as long as you want on this. I certainly take a while to do this kind of thing. So I'm just gonna do a little time jump in the video so that you don't have to watch me for hours. <laughs> so I will see you in a bit. Cue time jump. So after all that, this is what I've got. I'll just quickly show you all, all of my different layers. So the cool thing about this is we can hide different layers or we can hide whole folders by clicking this. So you can see for my terrain, for all my grass, that's covering most of this. And then underneath it, I've got a path here. And then if I come up to level one, this is where my objects and house are. So if I hide the objects, you can see that's everything I had in my objects layer. That's my house. So if I hide level two, that's my little house there. And just level two and the roof. So now if I just run the game, Let's see what that looks like. Okay. So if I walk around, you can see I don't have any collision up, but if we come under the house like this, you can see that I'm moving under the roof. That's exactly what we want. And at the moment, so we're moving in front of objects, but if I go behind them, it's not like my player disappears behind the posts or anything. We'll be doing that in another video, but for now I want to set up some basic collision to prevent our player from moving behind objects. So what we're going to do is come up here and we're going to create another instances layer and I'll put it above this one. 
So remember that object that we made, we've actually already set up collision. And what we can do is drag this object into here and we'll call this layer collisions. And we'll drag this object into our little world wherever we want the player to collide. So for the little building here, I'm gonna make it about this much. And we'll just approximate like this. At the moment, it's snapping to the grid. So if you wanna be more precise about it, you can click that off or you can just turn off the snap. And so you can click and drag and make it precisely around the things. I'm just gonna make it a bit quicker for you. So something like that. And we can even do the same for the pond to prevent the player from moving into the water. Like that, all right. So now if we turn off the collisions layer, if we make it not visible, then that's not gonna come up in the game and we'll just have a sort of invisible barrier. So now if we run the game and we try and move into the house, we've got collision set up and we can't go there. All right, so that's about it for today. I'd love to see what everyone else has done. So if you've made a project and you've spent a bit of time doing up your little farm, be sure to share that in the comments. I'd love to see it and I'm sure everyone else would too. Or if you found any other assets on something like open game art and you want to share that with everyone else, that would be great too. So I hope this helped and I'll see you guys next time.